before we get into our topic, does anybody here feel that GitOps doesn't solve all your problems with deploying and makes things harder or anything else? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, keep your hands up. You got the picture so we can count later. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, we are proposing and hopefully this will happen to extend the concept of GitOps to a few more things and we are postulating some ideas on how this will happen. What you will see in this uh, presentation are mock-ups. So don't come with us and say, how do I activate this? Why is this not in my Argo version? So let's start. I'm Omar Asman. I'm a principal engineer. Um, my focus is on continuous integration, continuous delivery. And Michael? I'm a staff engineer at Intuit on the Argo CD team, uh, as well as an Argo CD maintainer. Two thirds of the commits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a little bit about Intuit. Intuit aims to create an AI-driven expert platform. Uh, some of the things which are a interesting to us that relate to this talk is there's over 2,000 services in production and it's growing rapidly as we're decomposing our monoliths. There are 44,000 syncs every day for Argo to perform and there's over a thousand teams doing this and another uh, interesting fact is since we started our whole journey into GitOps and where we are today, measured by the number of features into production, divided by the number of engineers active that week, we have a nine time increase, which our target is to get much higher than that. So what happens in continuous deployment? As we've seen with Cargo, if you've seen the preview presentation or other tools or whatever, the first thing that happens is somebody or some automation proposes a change, then that change gets deployed, then that change gets promoted, then it gets deployed, then it gets promoted, and in some cases, either through rollouts or some cases three days later, you have to roll it back revert the change. Argo CD role is mainly limited to deployment. Doesn't do anything else at this point of time. It does it very well, but that's all it does. In the future of GitOps, we want to define GitOps so it covers all of this. And we're gonna show you what we mean. So the current GitOps workflow. Let's say that I propose this change. I changed the image. I changed some other value, which is a app level label. And I send it over. Michael, please approve this. So when I see this uh, pull request opened, I'm gonna review it. I'm going to immediately have some questions. First, I see that I'm operating uh, on customization stuff. I see that in the file name. I see also that I'm working in a directory called app base. So my first thought is, all right, am I actually seeing all the changes for all of the environments that this code would actually affect? Uh, and the answer is I don't really know just by looking at this pull request. So what I would end up doing is I would say, hey, Omer, could you um, generate a diff for me so I can get a better idea of exactly what I'm gonna be deploying after Customize does its stuff. The process for Omer would be you check out the main branch, uh, you run customize build. Notice only running customize build on one environment. Um, so you generate the before state, you check out your PR state, uh, run customize build again, and then you generate a diff. So a little bit of toil there. Uh, I could ask Omer, hey, would you just comment for me on the pull request what that diff looked like? Uh, and I can see that what I originally suspected when I saw that pull request is true. 
more is being changed than just an app image tag and uh, a config map. It is actually touching label selectors in services. Uh, so it's really good that I got to see this diff. Still, I don't know which environments this affects. We just generated a diff for one environment. But this is better than what we had before. In practice, most people don't do that. They do this, and we do this on the Argo CD team when we deploy Argo CD itself at Intuit. We have 50 instances, and we don't have time to go run customized build for every single one of them. So we turn off AutoSync, and we do the diff in the Argo CD UI, which defeats a lot of the benefits of uh, GitOps. We get this nice, pretty diff in the Argo CD user interface. The problem is this diff could sit there indefinitely. If I merged the pull request to make the change, and I looked at the diff, and then I got distracted. Dog needs to go out, it's lunchtime, whatever. Uh, I go on vacation. My coworkers may come and try to make another change and see, okay, well, what is this change that now I have to either go revert or roll out with my change? They have to go around asking questions, and potentially, if they're not careful, they end up accidentally pushing out my change with theirs. So turning off auto-sync is Certainly not ideal. Um, but once we're past the point of actually looking through the diff, uh, toilsome as it is, we get it merged, we're on to promoting the change through a series uh, of environments. So Omer will walk you through getting his change promoted. So the, what we're looking here is a Jenkins screen, which is the current build platform we use at Intuit. And Jenkins leaks some of the underlying steps, there's actually not, doesn't show all of them, there's about 34 steps to do a deploy, but really a developer really cares that it does a deploy, which is confusing, but what's worse is the deploy fails. So he looks here and he says, uh, this doesn't help me, this doesn't say anything. So then maybe he looks into the console and looks through a lot of non-recognizable stuff. And even though we added recently, which doesn't, we didn't show it here, some AI capabilities to scan the log, it won't find it because the information really isn't there why the deploy failed. So then he goes and he looks in Argo CD. No, he calls support. Support tells him look in Argo CD. But he looks in Argo CD and there's all these resources that have a problem and now he's going to try to revert it, but that reverts only part of the change, not the whole change because he, it changed the config map and reverting this will only revert the object. That's not so good. So then he says, okay, let's go here and try to select from Argo to do a revert and that doesn't update Git and also doesn't do the whole thing. So then he says, okay, let's go to git and pull that branch back, that commit back into head to go back and he has to do, and that's a complex thing, error prone, but it's the closest thing that still get opsy and he gets it done. But as we've seen, proposing very, a lot of work, a lot of error, promoting is a wild west, um, reverting is also hard, and so we're proposing to have a flow that extends GitOps Git using capabilities that we have today in Git. And it starts from the same change that we proposed here, and now over to, we, we kind of went into the future, and now he's going to show you what's possible in the future. So imagine what could be. Uh, this time, Omer has opened the pull request. And when I go to review it, I automatically get this nice comment from a bot. And Argo says, uh, here are the environments that are going to be affected. That's an answer to a question that I didn't get the answer for before. And it says, here are the diffs. And if I click any one of those, I get to see all the changes post customize render. So I do see that it's affecting uh, service label selectors. Um, and now I can feel confident to actually merge that pull request. Now, 
The pull request has been merged. Note that BF1414B commit hash, because that is the unit that we are going to promote through the various environments. First, when the pull requests get merged, remember you saw a Jenkins pipeline. Previously, that was my interface for understanding the promotion process. Now, it is just the GitHub pull request interface. The moment I merge that PR to the main branch, um, automation opens three pull requests for me. The first one you don't see because it was dev and there were no prerequisites, so the system automatically merged that and started deploying it for me. Um, and Argo CD has auto sync turned on, so that immediately went out. Now I have these other two. You can tell by the little yellow dots that there are still checks to be performed on him, uh, things that are blocking those merges. So let's go into the, the first pull request for test and go top to bottom and see what this involves. First, it's telling me what we're promoting. We're promoting that commit SHA that was merged to the main branch, and we're merging it to the environment slash test branch. Uh, you see that we have a staging area called test next. That is where rendered manifests start. And then once this pull request is merged, it is going to go to the test branch. That is where rendered manifests are being auto-synced by Argo CD. We've got a nice little description from Argo about what the change is, uh, and I think most importantly, down at the bottom, we have some checks. These are what are preventing this pull request from being merged right now. The first one is just an example of the type of check you could use. Uh, like Intuit, it's, it's tax freeze today. We would want a check that says nothing is going out because we're on tax freeze. Uh, in fact, this one is passing, so it means there's no code freeze. Two checks we get for free from Argo CD are one, has that commit SHA been uh, synced in the prerequisite environment, so in the dev branch? Um, that has happened. And now we're just waiting on the dev app to become healthy with that new commit. If I look at the details uh, link that is beside that check, it'll take me to a UI that looks something like this. This is all my artwork, so don't judge too much that this is kind of not a great mock-up. The important thing is the concepts. Every node here represents a concept that already exists in the Git and the SCM ecosystem. Uh, so the big nodes, we have dev, test, and prod, those correspond to branches. And if you click those buttons, you'll go to the GitHub interface and you'll be looking at branches and the whole history of each of those environments based on the commits. You can see that in the test and prod uh, environments, we have an old commit shaw from the main branch running there, and they're healthy. That's the green, uh, little green heart. And you see that in dev, we merged that hydrated manifest pull request. BF1414B has been deployed there, and we're just waiting on it to become healthy. For each of the PRs that are gonna be used to promote this change up, we've got a node in between the environments indicating, okay, we're waiting on it to, to be moved up. And then we've got a list of the checks um, that are blocking the merge. So for dev, we're waiting on healthy, deployment freeze is fine. I added an example for going from test to prod. A lot of times people want something special for prod. They want to change request approval. They want someone to manually approve it from management. So you could add whatever checks you want there, security scans, whatever. When something goes wrong, uh, the experience ends up looking something like this. Argo CD already knows how to monitor your app's health. That's where you get the little red broken heart. Once it recognizes that you have an application that is broken, it says, okay, there's a problem with BF1414B. We're going to open a pull request to automatically revert that change. So as a developer, this is what I get to see. Um, I get a pull request that says there's a problem in the dev branch. We're reverting from this commit to the previous commit or the previously known healthy commit. Uh, I can click over and look at the full diff. So unlike before, when I had to manually go open this and it was the dry manifest that didn't tell the whole story, I see the whole story immediately when Argo CD recognizes that there's a problem. I can review the changes and either I could auto merge it if I just really, really trusted my checks or if I wanna be cautious, I can go hit the merge button. And just remember, we're doing things that devs already know how to do. They know how to hit merge on pull requests. They know how to read git status checks on commits. Uh, nothing here is unfamiliar territory. So uh, I'll pass it back to Omer. That's the full experience. Omer can sum it up for us. So proposing by using the GIST interface, 
is now clear and safe. The promotion is fully recorded in Git according to the GitOps standards, and reversions are automatic and atomic and recorded in Git. Now, in order to do the proposing, we need a previewer and hydrator built into the application spec. And somebody asked me here about Cargo. Cargo could use that as well, because once you open the PR, they could, you, we could show what, what's going to happen if you merge it. And then promoter reverter would have to be a CRD. And again, we could discuss between us and eventually reach an understanding on how it happens. But our main concern is that this will be Git opsy. OK? So Git in our opinion, should be the interface and not just the database. That's, that's the concept, and that every change is traceable back completely through all the stages to the exact commit and who did it. So if you want more information, you can do this while we are going to answer questions. That also has a link, so a link to two proposals and a link to a Slack channel on CNCF Slack where uh, there are already some folks in there discussing the design. We intentionally went through this very quickly because we figured there'd be questions. Um, so yeah, let's start with Christian. Um, miss microphone? We, yeah, we've got a mic. We have a mic coming. Okay. So we get it on the recording? Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, so actually my question, it may, it's, it's adjacent to this but it's something that's been on my mind because um, you know, we do rendered manifests and you, know, you do hydration. Um, it, it, we just use the term hydration. Hydration, rendered manifest. Because rendered manifest was yeah. overloaded. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. So like whatever, you know, that. Yeah. Um, and we did have, we did briefly put this on Twitter. I just kind of want to open the discussion. Is that um, when OCI comes into play, um, I think a lot of like the diffing becomes difficult um, because it's like now you have this other thing. Has there been, I know I, I put in some thought into it, but like if, as, if you guys like put any thought into like how, how OCI fits into this once like, you know, support for OCI comes into Argo City. It's, is my main concern about OCI for deploying manifests. The UI was meant for container images. Artifactory was meant for container images and honestly, Developers don't even look at it that much. Uh, their CI pipeline pushes stuff. They trust that it's there. Um, in order for OCI to provide the same experience that developers get using GitHub, GitLab, et cetera, today, the interface for OCI has to be upgraded. It's got to add diffing capabilities from artifact to artifact. It's got to be able to show a history. Um, that's a lot of rebuilding what already exists in Git. Now, there's some very important, very, for a lot of companies, indispensable benefits to using OCI. So one uh, strong point of the proposal, one that's linked there, the Manifest Hydrator proposal, is that it provides an interface on the application CR to hydrate to a branch that we don't actually sync from in Argo CD and specify a different source location for the actual sync. The intention behind that is to provide a way for promoters to say, okay, we hydrate to the dev next branch, but don't sync from there yet. We're gonna wait on some promotion system to copy that change from dev next to dev. And that's what we actually sync from. You could build on that same concept to, to hydrate to dev next and then have a tool push that to OCI. And then OCI becomes the place that you actually sync from. So I think the system is flexible enough to incorporate that. I think that there are a few steps before we get to you know, full-blown OCI support with these, these concepts. Okay, and, and I guess with OCI, there's metadata, like other data, then like you can like verify like this is an actual version that's actually in that branch. And, okay. Correct. Actually, yeah, you'd probably want to use, you'd want your CI to sign it, and then you'd want Argo CD to verify the signature to make sure, okay, well, yeah. this is actually what we were supposed to deploy. Yeah, exactly. Other questions, Carlos. Um, so my, my question is around application sets. Uh, I have a project that 
is, is based on, the environments are based on application sets. So the definition of the environments basically is like folders based on Helm charts, value files. And, and I saw here that was like branch base, which is um, in some talks, people say like they hate branches, use folders, don't use folders, just branches. So is, is there something in there like uh, we're, we're going back or is it like the, this, the describing of the new thing just different? Good, good question. Um, it's one of the main questions people immediately have when they see this. Yeah. The problems okay. with branch-based environments are that your users have to interact with those branches, and it's an absolute pain to keep track of, okay, what's in this branch, what's in that branch, what am I copying, oh, now they've drifted, oh, God, how do I do anything? Branches get messy when branches are the user interface. In this case, the model is still one branch for the dry manifests. The dry manifests are your user interface. We automatically push to a set of environment branches. No one's expected to touch those. Those are just for historical purposes and seeing fully hydrated manifests. So not going backwards, uh, sticking with directories for environments. You mentioned application sets. This will work well with application sets if you're not using the app set to inject additional information from external sources, because people do that a lot. I've seen people even inject secrets using application sets. Bad idea, don't do it, but all kinds of runtime stuff. One of the foundational assumptions of this system is that your hydration processes are going to be deterministic, which means for a given commit in the dry branch, you can always run Helm template, run customized build, whatever. You'll get the same output. You're not injecting stuff from the application CR, from like the source.customize.override this, patch that. It all comes from Git. So if you're using app sets to inject stuff, that's a problem. But you can still easily use an app set to say, okay, I want an app for this environment, that environment, that environment. Use a Git directories in generator, awesome. Populate uh, the source hydrator spec, and all of this will work perfectly with that. The system, the promotion part, would work between application sets. So if you have one application set for all your pre-prod and one for all your prod, and then you'd promote. But a single application set, of course, would be deployed to you to borrow from Cargo in a single stage. Other questions? Any other? Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I. Uh, I have a little bit different use case. Um, we generate our manifest programmatically, write Go programs, and usually uh, push them into Docker containers. And when I have to push into dev stage prod, I run those containers to generate those manifests. And uh, so they are always deterministic. Hmm. So I'm trying to think, and I don't see that problem that you're trying to solve in my use cases. I mean, is, is this... Uh, is, does this still fit my flow eventually? Would it fit, or how, how do you see it from your perspective? Because you, of course, know much more yeah. of the GitOps than me. I have a very narrow view of it. So. This system assumes you want your devs looking at YAML. Okay. Um, if you are building your manifests into a container image that your devs aren't going to see, they don't really care about, then you don't really need this system. Okay. Um, if you are writing a controller that... Uh, you know, all of the changes happen for the developer on the Kubernetes cluster. Maybe this isn't something that you really need. This is very much leaning into the hydrated manifest pattern of my devs really, really want to know what they're changing. They want to be able to review each other's PRs and understand what's going out. We just don't have the tooling to empower them to do that right now. So this won't be the tool for everybody. It sounds like it probably wouldn't be the tool for you necessarily right away. Um, yeah, I, I think that probably your system is going to be fine as All is. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So one thing that I often see in uh, CI managed promotions is a need to do things between the different steps, right? So for example, you mentioned pre or production, there's things that you need to do, but sometimes those things take scripts or logic to actually make happen. It's not something you can just define declaratively. So I'm kind of wondering how you see that fitting into this system or if well, it does fit there's, there's, into the system. Two things you can do. There's two things you can do to do things between the steps. First, you could use Argo rollouts, and so you do all kinds of stuff, and the, 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 
the stage goes healthy when all the rollouts have completed, you can also put different checks in your GitHub to do stuff. They could, there, there, there's, the GitHub checks interface doesn't say what it checks. It says that the check can say I'm in progress, I failed or succeeded. So when a new PR comes in, that will kick off the check and the check will do whatever you want. And then either give in progress while it's working, success or fail at the end. And that's the way you put things in between. One of the examples I gave was like CR approval, but it could be anything. Um, so you've still got your full suite of like, you've got Argo CD post sync hooks, pre sync hooks, whatever, you can inject stuff there, build an Argo workflow in there, great. That'll show up in your app help. Uh, the other thing you can do, um, like Armour's describing, whatever you want can be in those checks. Uh, you're going to have a controller that sees, okay, we've got a change that has just hit the main branch. We're going to run some EDE tests. And until it reports these EDE tests have passed for commit Shaw BF 1414B, um, it's not going to let you promote to the next environment. So it's more of a declarative reactive way of moving things through environments rather than sort of the old school uh, Jenkins model of I have a pipeline that does A then B then C. Furthermore, like let's take the example of our uh, block for tax season that prevents you. Well, it could, our block is for a whole week. So for a whole week it will say in progress and when the tax season is off, but let's say it's something rush. So then the master administrator of the repo can get approval from whoever at Intuit according to our internal rules and go and click that button and say merge it anyway. So it allows this kind of flexibility. One of the problems today we're using Jenkins to do our CD and one of the things that happens is you have the regular pipeline to take you through everything. Then you have a copy paste for the A-B testing and a copy paste for we're now doing a revert. And, a, and then they start going out of sync of each other. And it, it's, it's not, you need a solution more like, like cargo or what we're describing here that's not uh, fixed on the order or fixed on what you're trying to do, but rather, depending on what you need and familiarity with the topology, takes the correct action. More questions. Um, do we have more time? Yeah. Tell us how much time we have. Uh, two we'll... minutes. Two minutes, okay. Okay. Are quick? Are they quick? Or yeah. you go first? <laughs> um, how are you planning to support sources and how many breaking API changes do you expect this to cause, if any? When you say no. sources, you mean multi-source? Correct. Won't let support multi-source. Let, let me take uh, it. I think I might actually, because I just wrote a big thing about yeah, this. Yeah, that's um, what I <laughs> Okay, you take it. Uh, the, the whole point is you have one source of truth, uh, which means if you want to inject additional information, <laughs> you do it with a controller, a mutating webhook, or something that pushes to get on some system's behalf to a single Git branch, everything that happens to that app either shows up in a commit or it's already managed by something else on the cluster. There's a, there's a whole section of the, the Hydra proposal called opinions <laughs> and it, it goes into that. Okay, thank you. Yep. And as to API changes, existing APIs no will remain. Changes. Yep. Have you guys familiar with Jenkins X? Somewhat, yes. Yeah, I've just uh, seen your proposal and looked exactly what Jenkins X is doing. Well, not exactly. Like from the perspective of idea, like you have uh, your PR and you have Lighthouse, which do a checks on the PR and promotion process, like it looks definitely like There that. are some things that are common. Jenkins X was an attempt, an early attempt to build a replacement for Jenkins. And no, the team that, that attempted it uh, did not continue and it's uh, CloudBees is trying to do something with it to keep Jenkins alive. It's totally different product for sure. 
I know. We, if you read Kiwagachi's document about why that was developed, he reached the conclusion of, that Jenkins can't be fixed. Yeah. That we, you have to start again, and that was his start again. But it, Jenkins X is a, is a good back-end tool for pipeline under certain conditions. It requires an, another tool to act as a UI, and we're trying, we're, the main thing we're discussing here is how to use Git as the UI behind driving GitOps and expanding the definition of GitOps to not just syncing, but also changing in promotion through Git, and that's what we're proposing. Now, if you can get Jenkins X to do this, that you're fine. I mean, we haven't yet implemented this. This is a proposal. Does That's that done. answer? Yeah. Jenkins X was built to try to be a Jenkins replacement, which is too much for what we need and not enough of other stuff we need. We'll be in the hallway track. Definitely come up to us and ask more questions. Uh, thank you again so much for, for watching.